My name is Kelly Flannery and I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the City of Charlotte. My primary duties, including those prescribed in the North Carolina Local Government Finance Act, include keeping the accounts of the city, dispersing funds in compliance with state requirements, receiving and depositing all monies of the city, financial reporting, risk management, supervising the investment of funds, and the focus of this learning module, managing the city's debt. This informative session will provide an overview of the types and appropriate uses of debt, including the credit rating process. Additionally, I will discuss the city's use of long-term financial instruments and provide an overview of outstanding long-term debt and the debt management process, including a review of the metrics that are contemplated prior to the issuance of debt and provide an overview of those current metrics for the city. Finally, I will discuss the city's continuous improvement efforts to maintaining fiscal stability. The city maintains a balanced mix of financing strategies for funding capital projects without a reliance on any one source. Strategies include pay-as-you-go or pay-go, grants, and the issuance of debt. Debt is a source that provides the city with access to low-cost capital for important infrastructure projects. The city's distinction of having the highest credit rating assigned to the bonds contributes significantly to the lower cost. The city generally uses long-term bonds to provide financing for capital needs and bond anticipation notes to provide interim short-term funding during project construction. These short-term programs are retired over time upon the issuance of long-term bonds or an annual budget allocation. The city's utilization of interim financing allows the city to realize interest cost savings while new capital projects are constructed. The city regularly evaluates its existing bond portfolio for refunding opportunities as a means of providing interest cost savings. Similar to refinancing a home mortgage, a refunding is when the city refinances outstanding bonds by issuing new ones at lower interest rates. Each time a refinancing is contemplated, a savings analysis evaluating the savings and present value is prepared that identifies the economic effects of any refunding. The city aims for a minimum present value savings on a refunding candidate of at least 3% of the refunded debt and does not extend the maturity date. We've talked about why the city issues debt, and now, how do we do it? There are multiple financing vehicles available when contemplating project funding. The most common is fixed rate long-term debt, generally in the form of municipal bonds. Typically, municipal bonds have final maturities of 20 to 30 years from the date of issuance and provide certainty for long-term financial planning. Approximately 90% of the city's outstanding long-term debt is fixed rate. Short-term debt is appropriate for certain capital equipment purchases and to satisfy the cash flow needs of the city on a limited basis. Short-term debt may be issued with either fixed or variable interest rates. The city may use short-term debt, including bond anticipation notes or bans, commercial paper, also known as CP, lines of credit or notes. The use of interim short-term debt allows the city to only pay for projects as construction is being contemplated rather than borrowing all of the money up front. From time to time, the city has used derivative products on various transactions, such as swaps, to realize lower all-in costs on a new debt issuance or to receive an upfront payment based on currently outstanding bonds. Currently, the city has three outstanding swaps. Where installment purchase or lease financing would prove more economically beneficial, the city will consider entering into long-term capital asset obligations. The useful life of the capital facility or equipment the terms and conditions of the lease, and the direct impact on debt affordability and budget flexibility will be evaluated prior to the implementation of a lease program. A direct borrowing is a privately placed loan to the city from a banking institution or another lender. Direct loans allow the city to negotiate beneficial terms directly with a financial partner rather than going into the public market. City council approval is required for each of the debt mechanisms just described. In addition to city council approval, the state's local government commission, or LGC, approves the city's borrowing transactions. The LGC is a nine-member state body within the Department of the State Treasurer that approves most local government borrowing transactions and issues bonds on behalf of local units. The LGC examines whether the amount being borrowed is adequate and reasonable for the projects and is an amount that the city can afford to repay. As previously discussed, when contemplating the issuance of debt to fund capital, the city primarily issues long-term fixed rate debt. The city's long-term debt profile is comprised of three types of financings, general obligation bonds, revenue bonds, and certificates of participation. 
General obligation bonds are issued to fund general capital needs of the city. The city agrees to repay the bonds with all available general fund revenues and pledges its full faith credit and taxing power to pay principal and interest. The North Carolina Constitution generally requires that the city hold a successful voter referendum before issuing bonds. Revenue bonds are issued to fund facilities for the airport, water and sewer systems, and stormwater system. Revenue bonds are payable from a specific source of revenue to which the full faith and credit of the city is not pledged. For example, airport bonds are payable from airport revenues and water sewer bonds are payable from water sewer user fees. General city revenue is not obligated to pay principal and interest on revenue bonds. No voter approval is required prior to the issuance of revenue bonds. Certificates of participation, or COPs, are debt instruments that share in a revenue stream, usually installment purchase payments. The city has used COPs to fund cultural and tourism projects, as well as CATS projects. COPs payments are included in the annual budget and are subject to annual appropriation. COPs do not require voter approval. City Council approval is required for each of the financings just described. The city issues debt across multiple credits. Most cities have general capital needs that are funded through long-term debt, but not all cities also have water, sewer, and stormwater systems, airports, and transit systems, also known as enterprise systems. An enterprise system is a revenue-generating facility or a system that provides funds necessary to pay debt service on the securities issued to finance construction. The debt incurred for each enterprise system, or credit, is self-sufficient with the facility producing sufficient revenues to cover all debt service and other requirements imposed under the bond contract. The city's general government, as well as its enterprise system credits, enjoy high ratings. The city of Charlotte has a history of sound financial policy and practices and has consistently held AAA ratings, the highest municipal government ratings available. The city first received a AAA rating for general obligation bonds over 42 years ago in 1977. The city relies on key financial policies to ensure needs are met in fiscally responsible ways. The city adopts a comprehensive set of financial policies and benchmarks to ensure the financial resources are managed in prudent manner and to provide a foundation for financial sustainability. When contemplating financial sustainability, the city strives to achieve the lowest cost of borrowing, retain the highest credit ratings, comply with regulations, and maintain best practices. Affordability for capital projects is reviewed throughout the year using comprehensive debt models. These long-range financial plans evaluate future revenue and expenses dedicated to capital and future debt service requirements and contemplate the ability to fund future projects. The models specify the ability to issue debt that can be fully repaid with existing or planned revenues. Appropriate debt limits can have a positive impact on bond ratings, particularly if the government demonstrates adherence to such policies over time, as reflected in Charlotte's long-standing AAA ratings. Financial limits often are expressed as ratios. Different financial limits are used for different types of debt. General government debt is generally measured by the following ratios. Debt per capita, debt to personal income, debt to taxable property value, and debt service payments as a percentage of general fund revenues or expenditures. When contemplating the general government debt program, the city commits to maintain adequate cash and fund balance reserves at levels required to maintain top tier credit ratings. The city maintains the municipal debt service fund balance at an adequate level to cover debt costs. The ratio of debt service fund balance to actual debt service costs will be approximately 50%. Additionally, the city maintains a balanced mix of financing strategies for funding capital projects without a reliance on any one source. Adhering to these debt management criteria has allowed the city to enjoy favorable ratios. Enterprise or revenue debt levels are often limited by debt service coverage ratios. For example, the annual net pledge revenues to annual debt service. Additionally, bond provisions contained in bond covenants and potential credit rating impacts are drivers of the appropriate level of coverage. Enterprise user fees are established based upon the operating costs, debt service, and coverage ratio of the debt service. When contemplating the appropriate debt management procedures for enterprise debt, the city seeks to achieve healthy coverage. Therefore, it has set coverage in the range of two times annual debt service. The amount beyond one times coverage is available for PAYGO funding of the enterprise capital needs. 
Each credit has their own benchmarks for PAYGO. Days of cash on hand is another measure of a system's financial security and estimates the number of days the system can pay its daily operation and maintenance cost. This is a helpful measure of how long a system can operate if it has a sudden and dramatic reduction in operating income. The higher the number, the more protected the system will be against revenue shocks. Taken with other financial ratios, days of cash on hand can help understand a system's financial position and make choices about rates. The city provides for the issuance of additional debt at reasonable time intervals that sustain reasonable ratios. Charlotte's enterprise fees compare well to other peer cities. I have spoken earlier of the importance of credit ratings to achieving low interest cost and ensuring maximum access to the bond market. There are three credit rating agencies that rate municipal debt for each of the city's credit entities. The rating agencies assess the credit quality of the city and the ratings reflect the likelihood that the city will repay its debt. Each of the credit rating agencies have similar rating criteria. General government criteria include the economy of the region, financial management, overall management of the city, and debt and pension liabilities. The city enjoys high credit ratings of the general government as well as its enterprise credits with the majority at AAA. Adherence to a debt management policy signals to rating agencies and the capital markets that a government is well managed and therefore is likely to meet its debt obligations in a timely manner. The city engages in continual valuations of the most cost effective means for providing city services. Debt models and affordability analysis are regularly updated to reflect changes in economic indicators, interest rates, and project timelines. As project timelines and implementation schedules are altered, cash flows are also adjusted. These continual reviews allow the city to preserve flexibility and to use debt as needed and at the lowest cost achievable. Monitoring interest rates in the municipal market and the treasury market is required to determine when refunding is economical and if interest rate saving targets can be met. The city regularly evaluates its existing bond portfolio for refunding opportunities as a means of providing interest cost savings. City staff is committed to maintaining the highest standards of financial management. I would like to commend the mayor and city council for their strong leadership and support in setting sound fiscal policy to ensure financial resources are managed prudently and to provide a foundation for financial sustainability.